now we want to keep applying the expected value to different contexts. And this time we're going to apply it to another business besides insurance. But this problem is going to be a little bit trickier for you. If you look at the insurance problem, I actually gave the total amounts of the claims and the probabilities associated with them. And here you're going to have to figure that out yourself. And we're not looking at claims, we're looking at profit. So an oil company is considering two sites on which to drill, site A and site B. Now, these sites have different profit and loss potential. So the profit on site A is 80 million if they find oil, but they lose 10 million if they don't find oil. And the probability of finding oil is 0 0.2. So let's put in a little row right here and let's label these as site A and site B. There we go. Now the profit for site A is 80, right? Positive 80 because it's profit, yay, right? You get money. But the loss, if you find no oil is 10 million, but loss in business is negative. You're losing dollars. So it has to be a negative 10. We don't say that in English. I mean, what we say is it's a loss. And then we have to know in our accounting business brain that that must be negative. The probability of finding the oil is 0 0.2. Well, you either find oil or you do not find oil. Those are your only options. So the probability for not finding oil would be 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. They're complements of each other. Remember the complement rule? And actually, let's make a note right up here about the negatives. So note um, loss in business, gambling, etc because it's not just going to happen in business, will be negative. All right, so there's site A. Now let's do it for site B. The profit, if they find oil, is 120. But the loss, there it is, that word again, it's negative 18. And the probability of finding oil is 0 0.1. Well, again, you either find oil or you do not. So it's 1 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9 for the probability of not finding oil. They're complements. I'm using the complement rule from chapter five. So now I want to find the expected value for each of these. Well, you could go type this in L1 and L2, but honestly, it's so easy. All you have to do is multiply 80 times 0.2 plus negative 10 times 0.8. That's all there is to it. So, I mean, if you want to go put it in L1, knock yourself out. So AD times 0 0.2, close my parentheses, plus, or, well, let me just do plus, negative 10, don't forget to use the little negative symbol down there, parentheses 0 0.8. There you go, 8. Now, if, in case you didn't believe me, let me just show you, stat edit, I can clear this out, and type in those two values, or those two columns. There they are. Stat Calculate one variable, yeah, yeah, enter. And there's the mean of eight right there at the top. See? So it's, it's fine either way. Now remember our unit here was million dollars. So when we find that eight, what it really is is eight million dollars, right? So there's the pro expected profit for site A. Now site B, same idea, but different numbers. So we could go to stat edit. I'm just going to type it 120. There we go. Parentheses times 0 0.1. Close parentheses. Plus negative 18 times 0 0.9. Enter. And I get negative 4.2. I also just now typed them into stat edit. Go to stat calculate number one. There they are. So find it whichever way makes you comfortable. That's fine. So it's negative 4.2 million. That would be the mean for site B, which is negative 4.2. So 4 million 200 thousand. All right. Now let's think about this from a slightly different perspective. If the CEO of this oil company is an optimist and believes always the best things will happen, essentially what he's saying is ignore the probabilities. I just think the best thing is going to happen. So ignore, 
Actually, let me type that up. There we have it. So an optimist is basically saying, ignore the probabilities. The best things are going to happen to me. You know, good things are coming my way. Well, if that's the case, that CEO would choose site B. Now, why site B? Well, because site B, if I can write the letter B there, um, because that site has the highest possible profit. Okay, so good things are going to come my way. This 120 is going to come my way. Right? I believe good things are going to happen. I don't care. Uh, good stuff is coming, so it's going to be the 120. 120 is coming for me. Sounds a little bit like a gambler, right? So there's a reason for that, right? One would argue that perhaps CEOs often have to have a little bit of gambling heart in them in order to be able to make the decisions that they make. All right, now what if the CEO is a pessimist? Oh, you know, worse things are going to happen. I'm, you know, I've got a plan for the, the worst things. You know, what if all of this goes bust? Sorry, I just retyped that. I have to plan for the worst things just in case, right? Well, first of all, that probably um, would, it's a very conservative, cautious CEO. So this is a cautious CEO, right? Whereas the one up above is kind of um, a gambling CEO, right? Somebody who's willing to take risks, which as much as the movies would have you believe, oh, risks is always the greatest thing. The, the best CEOs make um, sometimes gambling decisions, sometimes cautious decisions. So they mix the two up a bit. But a cautious, you know, very conservative, and I mean small C conservative CEO um, will choose site A. And the reason is because if the worst things are going to happen, you're going to lose less money on site A, right? Site B could really break you with that extra $8 million in loss. And that's what I just typed there. So that CEO would choose site A because if it isn't going to work out, they're out less money, right? The loss is less. Now, if the CEO is a statistician, bases his decisions on data and evidence, none of this ignore the probability stuff. If that's the case, then which site would they prefer? And the answer is absolutely site A, because the expected value is positive 8 million. And there we have it. So the statistician CEO would choose site A because site A has, oopsie, has the highest expected profit. There we go. Just along with the pessimist, that would also choose site A, whereas the optimist, site B all the way. And this is truly how decisions do get made at companies. Of course, we're simplifying it quite a bit. But nevertheless, um, big companies, oil companies for certain, and all the big companies you can think of, Johnson & Johnson, GE, uh, Google, Facebook, Apple, they all employ armies of statisticians to try to figure out what the best decisions are for the company. All right, now what about that gambling CEO? Let's suppose that person's going to a charity raffle um, because expected value is a very big deal with gambling. Let, we're going to analyze it a few different ways. So if the charity raffle is holding a raffle and sells 1,000 raffle tickets for $2 each, one of the tickets will be selected to win a grand prize of $1,000. Two other tickets will be selected to win consolation prizes of $50 each. So we need to construct a probability distribution for the profit on this raffle. So what are the possible outcomes you can have? Well, you could win the grand prize, right? Winning the grand prize would be great. You could win a consolation prize. Okay. Or you could win nothing. <laughs> so you could lose. <laughs> okay. Now let's let's figure out a couple things. We need to figure out our profit for each of these options and then our probabilities. The probabilities are actually pretty easy to figure. So let's do that to begin with. If you win the grand prize, there's only one winning ticket out of a thousand. So the probability of winning that grand prize is one out of a thousand. The winning consolation prizes, there's two of those. So that means that there's two out of a thousand consolation prizes. So three people are going to walk away with prizes. 
And if they sell a thousand tickets, that means 997 out of the thousand are losing tickets because there's only three winners. There must be 997 losers to make a thousand. It's the complement rule, right? From chapter five, these three have to add up to one, have to add up to a thousand. Now, what's your profit for each of these outcomes? Let's start with if you lose. If you lose and you bought a ticket, right? Every ticket that's a loser has a profit of negative two, right? Because it's a loss, right? You spend the two tickets. That's how charity raffles work, right? So you have a negative two for everybody except for three people. All right, now comes the tricky part. What about the person that wins a thousand dollar prize? Well, they won a thousand dollars. However, they paid two dollars to play. So their profit is a thousand take away two, which is only 998. That's their profit, right? Thousand for the prize minus the two dollars they paid to play. The consolation prize is 50, but you have to subtract the two dollars the person paid to play to buy the ticket, which means they're walking away with really only 48 dollars in profit. They spent $2 on the ticket. They win the $50 prize. They're only getting a, a profit of $48. All right. So if you buy one raffle ticket, what's the mean? What's the expected value? So what you want to do is you want to multiply each of these profits times their probabilities and add them up. Simple as that. Now, if you want, you can just do this in stat edit. So I'm going to clear these out and type these in. So 998, 48, and negative two. Make sure you use the little negative at the bottom of the calculator because that's the negative symbol. And then one out of a thousand, two out of a thousand, and then 997 out of a thousand. Stat, calculate one variable. Make sure you're using L1 and L2. And there you have it, negative 0.9. So this means the expected value for this. So the expected value is negative 0 0.9. What that means is that the expected profit on any random raffle ticket purchased is a loss of 90 cents. In other words, the negative 0.90, negative 90 cents, is the long run average profit expected on a $2 ticket if you kept running this raffle over and over and over. Where students always get confused is they think, well, I couldn't lose 90 cents. And that's true. You either lose $2 or you win a prize. But what's happening is if you played this raffle once and then did it again and then did it again and did it again every time, like every day for a week or something like that, and they kept running these raffles, then you'd expect your average lose, 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 get one win, lose, 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 lose to average out to be negative 90 cents. Now this makes sense as a charity raffle collects money greater than the prize is worth so as to pocket the extra money to help keep the charity running. So when you go to a charity raffle, you don't expect to walk out with profit, right? You expect to walk out with a loss. That's why you're giving to a charity raffle. 